you mentioned about the idea of having a very vivid, you know, how vivid these packages were, you know, how uh, alluring and how movie-like, I think. Um, could I just ask you to speculate, if, if this hasn't got the, the idea of a counter-narrative video or any counter-narrative nar uh, has really been put in place, what should that counter-narrative be? Uh, you said, I think you just partly answered my question there about it not being top down. But what should be this counter narrative, in, in your opinion? In order to develop a counter narrative, if you even talk about counter narratives, we need to understand what the ISIS narrative or the Al Qaeda narrative is in the first place. Um, they have a, a very binary narrative, as all extremist groups do, in which the world is divided into two warring factions Muslims versus non Muslims. Uh, and they're encouraging um, British Muslims and European Muslims to. Um, sort of join them and not be loyal to the states that they're living in and treat the states that they're living in as the enemy and treat them as the salvation for, for their, that particular cause. So it's, it's a binary divisive narrative that seeks to create a them and us mentality. So we have to understand what their narrative is first. We also have to understand how young people consume content these days. Young people don't read books, for example, anymore. When people look at short videos, 30 second videos, memes are shared online, short animes, and sort of flashy, sharp, short content is how most people learn and, and share content online. And that's exactly what ISIS is doing, it's producing very short, sharp con content, that's why it's so compelling. So we need to step into that space and do the similar thing. But use content that's as attractive as theirs in terms of you know, the way it's presented, but also have a very positive message around, around Britishness, for example, around being British, about being an inclusive society which embraces people from all backgrounds. Uh, specifically to make Muslims feel included and, and part and parcel of British society. Uh, and I think, you know, Sadiq Khan being male, so that's, that's a strong message in itself. Um, so I think we need, to, we need to know what our message is, and we need to know how to communicate that message. I, I'm very encouraged that you, you say that, particularly the last bit, because, uh, I mean, I'm thinking of the war, on, the war on drugs and all the rest of it. It's that essentially when you just put out, possibly, uh, something saying this is terrible and don't join it, there's a kind of impulse maybe to say, I'm not listening to them, I'm going to go ahead, or you know, whatever. The idea of actually giving them a positive yes. framework to say why this is better than that. Well, that's part of the reason why the whole war on terror thing was so, so off-putting, because it's a negative, it sounds negative, and people don't necessarily galvanise by something that's got a negative connotation, which is a war on something. But if something has a positive connotation, we're bringing people together, we're bringing communities together, we're creating mutual understanding, mutual tolerance, that's a positive message. That's something young people are more likely to want to embrace. I think you're right, that's, that's what we need to do, have a positive message. I suppose, I, I suppose I'd certainly echo that, you know, the necessity to put out a positive message here, because we can't be facing the fact that this is not a simple problem, this is not just about, you know, this of extremism. It's not just about young people, it's about, you know, a whole range of extremisms which drive people to violence. So there are other factors apart from the Daesh factor which can drive people to commit heinous crimes. Uh, it's also not just about young people, because we know, you know, there are other groups and communities who are very vulnerable, particularly people who are suffering from mental illness, who actually... You know, we need to be able to communicate with and send a positive message through. So just uh, the message which just focused on one driver in causing extremism can't be the whole solution. I'll absolutely support that in terms of the whole, co you know, cohesion piece um, and reflect on the flat fact that actually extremism takes a number of forms against a number and range of ideologies. Yes, but the, the primary one we're talking about is is uh, radical Islamism, isn't it? That's the main, that's the main driving, that's the reason for prevent. I, 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 that's not a view that I share, actually. I share that actually it's, it's extremism in, in, um, in the, the range of ways in which you see that, whether that be from Islamic extremism or, or that from the far right. So yes, I'm not doubting that they exist, but I think that this is reality, isn't it? I mean, it's mostly, it's, your work is mostly to stop people joining ISIS or whatever. That's not a view that I totally share because I see this as a bit. bit. I think, <laughs> I think you know, from my perspective as local government practitioners, we are focused on all forms of extremism, uh, and we do come across many far right cases. Of course, at the same time, you are right. Um, the only reason why Prevent exists is because of Seven Seven, uh, and the vast majority of the cases that we deal with in London are people who are trying to join jihadist organisations. So you're right in that sense, but at the same time. Uh, we can't have a message focused just on that crowd. We need a general message that basically says extremism as a phenomenon is bad, whether it's far left, far right, whether it's jihadist, whether it's environmental, whether it's animal rights, whatever.
whatever it is, anything that breaks, seeks to break the law or get young people to break the law is something that we as a local authority need to have an action plan around.